I'm going to tell you the story of how a bunch of Scottish rugby shirts started an empire. In this fable, we're going to tell you the tale of just how powerful a founder's values are when forming and moulding an organisation. Our story begins in the early 1950s. Around 200 miles east of San Francisco was, and still is, a mecca for big wall rock climbers of the world. Yosemite National Park houses sheer granite walls of El Capitan, Half Dome and the Sentinel. These huge walls extend to over a mile high and bring climbers from far and wide and were being scaled by a new era of climbers who saw these sheer faces as places to express their skills. To help them climb these walls, one climber began forging pitons which could be hammered into small seams in the rock to protect them as they ascended. The pitons became a must-have for all big wallers, with initially friends and then friends of friends ordering some from the climber. But the climber was troubled. There was something wrong, something that they didn't plan, something that didn't sit well with him. He hadn't realised the impact these pitons would have on his sacred rocks. Over time, the pitons began opening up these small seams, leaving pin scars where people had hammered them in. And this long-term impact was at odds with his love for the outdoors. He went back to his workshop and feverishly created a new set of climbing protection. This redesign became known as Hexcentrics and Nuts, and they were designed to be wedged between cracks and fissures to protect the climbers as they ascended the climb, but then could easily be removed from the wall without damaging the rock. The money he made from selling this equipment allowed him to travel across the world, taking part in expeditions to Pakistan, Europe and South America. But his equipment company was always just a vehicle to allow him this freedom. In 1970, while on one of these expeditions, he found himself in Scotland and he came across the rugby shirt. Thinking this was a perfect top for big wallers, as it was both rugged and warm, he bought a bunch of the shirts and brought them back to the US. The shirt sold well and allowed him to start a small clothing company. Again, all the time the business was never about scale or making money, it was about making a quality product for friends that would allow him that freedom to go climbing. The clothing range grew, always with a rugged technical functionality in mind. His goal to always provide clothing that would keep people warm in changeable climates, such as those experienced in Southern Andes and Cape Horn areas. The company went from strength to strength. With this success, he realized that the business could provide an opportunity to further his personal goals, these being to help support people and the planet. In 1984, the company opened an on-site cafeteria for staff. Two years later, they gave 1% of sales or 10% of profit, whichever was biggest, to environmental causes. In the 90s, they opened up their factory practices to help them reduce their environmental impact further. They continued this work to improve their supply chains, ensuring people throughout it received a living wage. And most recently, in 2022, the business ownership was handed over to a trust to ensure that future profits were used to help reduce climate change. So the very first values of making just enough to allow him to do what he wanted, to help people and to help reduce environmental impact, a part of him and that of his business over 50 years later. If you haven't guessed it already, the company is Patagonia and the founder is Yvonne Chouinard. Oh yes, and his first company, the climbing equipment company that was bought by staff and eventually became known as Black Diamond, one of the world's largest climbing equipment companies. At Hoffy, we're always talking to founders and organizations about their purpose, mission and values. And we talk about openness, transparency and being authentic to these values. So when you are thinking about your company and its values, we believe the easiest way to explore how the company is going to be true to them is to be the values of your founder and to think how your business can help with the change that you want to see. Now, this doesn't mean that the actual business has to be that change, but it can mean, like with Yvonne, that you can introduce ways of ensuring your values are present in the way that you do business. So that could be how you treat staff or suppliers or other companies. So I hope you've enjoyed the fable today. Do give us a like and do consider subscribing. We post weekly about design, design thinking, branding and digital. Thanks again and see you in the next video.